Thank you very much, Maya. Uh, good afternoon or good morning to everybody. And uh, we will talk about the clinical prerequisites. These are my disclosures. Why are we discussing about clinical prerequisites? Because the clinical question and the clinical background affect the modality according to which the examination is carried out in various manners. So it is very important. I think this is the most important statement because when you perform CT or MRI, you can go back, make more calculations, but the images are that ones. So most of the information can be obtained even afterwards. When you perform CEUs, uh, you cannot go back and review all images and change the settings because CEUs is a targeted, targeted investigation. So it addresses a very specific question. So it is very important to perform it adequately for that specific question. The way that we perform the investigation is therefore crucial and it affects the quality of the findings and these will affect the conclusions about the final diagnosis which depend on the quality of the findings and on the clinical information as we will see. So I think this is the key concept that is to be taken by all of you. It is very important before starting the CEUS examination to sit down look at the folder of the patient, at all his records, understand the very specific clinical situation, and then start thinking about how to perform your CEUS investigation. Therefore, all these things must be considered mandatory, especially because, as I mentioned, CEUS is not a panoramic technique, but is a targeted technique. So you have to know which is your target, otherwise you have to repeat it you cannot go back and see the images because most likely if you were off target you will never get the information that you would have liked to have. Therefore, don't be too much in a hurry if you don't know the patient. Uh, take the time needed to set very precisely the clinical uh, requisites, which is a matter of patient charts, but also sometimes you have to speak with the patient and collect from him the history to be acquired. This will lead you to decide which machine set things to set, how the contrast is to be injected, how much, because once that you have started the examination, usually it is highly recommended not to change the settings because this will affect potentially the findings and the clinical diagnosis leading to potential misdiagnosis and I will show you uh, some examples. Only if there is clear mistake you may be allowed to change the settings. Once the contrast is injected you do not have to change the settings, I mean gain, power output, uh, energy, because this focus, because unless you had make a mistake and you realize that you have made a mistake, if you change the settings, you might change apparently the finding and go to misdiagnosis. So I tried to make just a few examples of why it is so important to know the clinical prerequisites. For instance, if you are requested to perform a CEUS of the liver, it is mandatory to know exactly what is the aim of the investigation. In fact, if it is an incidentally detected focal liver lesion, and you want to characterize it, you have specific setting, a specific approach that I would show you. If instead the CEUS investigation of the liver is requested because of better staging of the extrapathic cancer, then probably you might even choose a different approach to the patient. And depending on what you are expected to see, you might see, choose different amounts of contrast which is not related only to the machine that you're utilizing, but higher or lower amounts depend also on the clinical question 
and the clinical situation. Just to make some example now because I won't touch it later. If the patient is, for instance, a cirrhotic patient and you want to, chatter, to characterize a lesion, it is important that you know whether the patient has portal thrombosis or not and not directly go and start injecting contrast targeting the lesion but make an overview of the liver because if there is portal thrombosis the liver is perfused only through the hepatic artery so everything that you inject will arrive uh, immediately all microbubbles to all parts of the liver differently from what happens in normal situation where the usually the lesion is perfused mainly by the artery depending of the um, degree of differentiation of the lesion and the rest of the parenchyma is performed only partially by the artery but mostly by the portal system if there is portal thrombosis this is no more true so it is necessary that you know all this information before you start the, you start your examination secondly and, and uh, going back to the liver it is very important as you, you will we will see to know the patient conditions if you want to assess a local regional therapy and you want to know whether there is a complete devascularization then clearly you have to set very well the target and the amount of contrast and the gain and we will look a bit at this if you want to perform endocavitary investigation for instance to assess the uh, drainage of an abscess and to detect whether there are lumen or fistulas you need just a few drops of contrast and not very much and so this is for different situations so let's start and focus mostly on the step of characterization of focal liver lesion because this makes more than half of uh, investigation with CUs all over the world we start usually from a, a lesion which is detected by conventional ultrasound because if the lesion had been detected by CT or MRI usually a complete characterization has already been carried out so the detection at conventional ultrasound of a lesion might happen, happen during an ultrasonography performed for symptomatic disease with a suspicion upon liver neoplasm and this is a very specific situation which is different from a ultrasound performed for poorly symptomatic disease unlikely related to the liver for instance intercurrent rapidly self-limiting abdominal pain renal colic prostate disease gynecological examination so in this situation fortuitously by chance you detect also a focal liver lesion which apparently has nothing to share with the target of the investigation so usually these are healthy subjects as well as in patients in which in whom you detect the focal liver lesion within a general health status screening so you, you some patients choose themselves to be submitted to ultrasonography just to check how they do but they are well and you detect the focal liver lesion these situations are again completely different from a situation in which you are asked to investigate a focal liver lesion detected during surveillance in patients with cirrhosis and at last if the patient has already a known extrahepatic liver cancer again if you detect a focal liver lesion in the liver and especially if it is small the chance of having a benign lesion is still up to 50 percent whereas if it was not there in a previous examination it has appeared later then the chance is much less so all these information are clinical prerequisites that are mandatory to be known before starting the contrast investigation so this help in deciding how to draw conclusions from the findings to the final diagnosis however even choosing how to perform the contrast depends on what you want to know for instance in this situation we have a target lesion of a incidentally detected focal liver lesion in a healthy subject this is hyperechoic lesion uh, in a slightly fatty liver but not cirrhotic at all and we want to characterize it if the target is the characterization of the lesion the aim then the lesion is to be very well visualized during the arterial phase which is key to a correct characterization 
So in this situation, the lesion is obvious, obviously too deep. So it was a wrong choice of the approach for the investigation that we want to perform. If instead this was a situation of a staging of a cancer and we only wanted to know if there were lesions washing out in the late phase, then potentially this approach could be better than another one because in this situation we can see the large part of the liver. So this is why it is important to know which is the target of the aim of the investigation. So the same patient as he was requiring a characterization was put on his left decubitus and seen through a subcostal scan and now you see that the lesion is no more 10-11 centimeters from the uh, transducers but is now come to between 7 and 9 and bringing it, it more superficial allowed it to uh, investigate better the arterial phase as you can see here and confirm uh, the diagnosis uh, in this specific situation. <clears throat> so it is very important that to make the correct characterization we see well the lesion, where the situation as I mentioned it is different from staging a patient. And this is what I said and you also have to be prepared to record the investigation and keep uh, the uh, file that can be reviewed later on. While if there is no need for continuous recording because the aim is not characterization, you can just wait and see if in the late phase there are lesions washing out. So even how to perform the investigation because in the first situation we must take care not to disrupt the microbubbles but to see the lesion which is at most important. If you want just to see if there are metastatic lesions you can spare contrast not looking continuously at the liver for the first minute but just wait at two minutes intermittently scanning only not to disrupt the microbubbles and keep them for the late phase in order to have a well perfused liver. So knowing the background is very important to make the right choice. This is another situation, this is a patient with multiple cysts but this is a he has a fever so this is a strange lesion that we don't know whether it is might be infected or not. So in this case a, a, a tube, a drainage tube was put in order to drain this lesion which was not clearly and overtly infected but after some weeks the lesion has decreased inside but was not decreasing anymore and you can see the tube here inside. So the question is is there maybe there was some tissue vital tissue, so this was a complicated cancer, a cancer complicated with hemorrhage or it was just a complicated cyst with clots inside that cannot be drained because clearly they are solid and not fluid. So if we want to uh, answer this question and we also want to know whether there is still solid or fluid material inside, we can inject both intravenously and in the tube. But if we know specifically the, que the two questions, we must select an order. So in this case, clearly, we first inject intravenously to confirm that there is no vital tissue inside. As you can see here, there is absolutely no perfusion inside this lesion. And so the question of whether there is vital tissue, tumor tissue is answered. And then, only later, we uh, inject sorry, we inject in the tube and we can, can see the uh, contrast arriving and perfusing the lesion slowly, just a few drops, so a completely different amount. You can see that the contrast arrives slowly and diffuse in the lesion, but not entirely, meaning that there are clots that clearly will never be drained and that and only a minor part is still fluid and can be drained. This is the late phase. Clearly, if we had injected first in the tube and then intravenously, it would have become very difficult to tell if there were enhancing areas in the lesion. 
So having very clear the clinical situation is mandatory in order to perform CUs in the right sequence with the right, right amount. There will be for sure other examples later, but here is the question. This is a patient with uh, um, other, uh, this, this was detected this morning, you can see the date here, so I just brought it as an example. This is a tiny lesion which is not clearly fluid, so we want to know uh, whether it is perfused or not, because it might be solid or it might be fluid. And this answer can be solved immediately, so we know the clinical question, but to answer the clinical question, we have subsequently to set up correctly the machine in order to correctly answer this question. So this is the highest gain, and you can see here that we have signals also in this region. So apparently we would say this is perfused, poorly perfused, but this is a too high gain, so having in mind the clinical question, we should set in order to have the correct assessment of perfusion and to detect whether there are vessels inside or not. In this case, it was a fluid, non-perfused lesion. So the, the clinical question is always uh, mandatory. So in the case, in the instance of focal liver lesion, we must pay attention whether the patient is at risk of hepatocellular carcinoma or not. This is because the possibility of different lesions are completely different. In case of cirrhotic liver, these are several studies, prospective studies, collecting all lesions arising during surveillance. We can summarize that 65% of new lesions in cirrhotic livers are hepatocellular carcinoma if they are very small, or up to 90-90% if more than 3 centimeters. If they are not hepatocellular carcinoma, they are, however, mainly regenerative dispersed nodules. Only very rarely, say up to 2% altogether, there are hemangioma, cholangiocellular carcinoma, or lymphoma, or metastasis. If instead it was a non cirrhotic liver, then most of the focal liver lesions detected incidentally in patients without oncological background will eventually be diagnosed as benign. So this is completely different from the cirrhotic situation. And this is holds even in patients with uh, previous cancer. And if not a benign lesion, most lesions will be metastatic lesions. So it is very clear that when we start, we have to know whether we are teratherally lesions in non-cirrhotic liver or in cirrhotic liver. And only in cirrhotic liver it is possible to establish a final diagnosis. So before starting the examination, we have to know whether there is mild fibrosis or severe fibrosis, and to this end, it is very important to use ultrasound elastometry, because if the patient is not at risk, so he has uh, not severe fibrosis or cirrhosis, and he is hepatitis C, we would follow the flowchart of lesions not at risk of hepatocellular carcinoma. This also for hepatitis B. Only hepatitis B with severe fibrosis or cirrhosis are at risk of hepatocellular carcinoma. So we can, uh, this is, can be summarized. I've already mentioned mo most of this. I come to the final slides just to make overview of the clinical background for focal liver lesions. The clinical setting is mandatory to be known. If the patient is asymptomatic, no suspicion of malignancy, and we detect a lesion, and this looks like a typical hemangioma, we even don't need seals, we can stop. And just repeat the sound, maybe never or only in long interval. If it is not a typical hemangioma, then we can perform seals. And we said these are not patients at risk of HEC, and are not patients at high risk of cancer because they have not, the, the problem is not arising because of symptoms, and not in patients in, with oncological background. So if we think it might be probably benign, uh, we can start with CEUS or MRI, because these are healthy subjects, are not patient, oncologic patients, and they do not deserve to undergo irradiation with CT. So CEUS and MRI are best, and most of the regions will fall within three, these three types, hemangioma, adenoma, or FNH. If instead, from the initial situation, either clinical or imaging, we suspect it is malignant, we might even include CT.
If instead the situation is oncologic, so usually CT and MRI are preferred. However, if we only would like to investigate the liver because everything is clear and we want to clarify whether there are metastases, then CUS is absolutely uh, important. And in this case, we will go to the late phase. Whereas in this situation, it is very important to uh, take record carefully completely the arterial phase. Whereas, as I mentioned, in the setting of cirrhosis, we think the, the same pattern that in, in uh, normal subjects might look like an FNH in case of cirrhosis is hepatocellular carcinoma. So the clinical background is uh, relevant. All these are different situations. Depending on the clinical background, we would choose one or another situation. So this I already mentioned it, when it is uh, atypical with risk factors, uh, contrast imaging is necessary for liver hemangioma and when it is FNH, please always keep in mind this, this is a rel relatively frequent diagnosis. If it is typical setting, young female, typical imaging with Doppler spoke with sign, typical Doppler spectra, centrifugal arterial hyper enhancement, then the diagnosis is established. But it must be the clinical background, young, female. If it is a typical setting because of imaging or because it is elder person, male, then it does not mean that we cannot make the diagnosis, but we must be much, much more cautious and possibly utilize other um, imaging techniques. So having said that, I thank all of you for, your, uh, for listening to this lecture and I give back the word to Maya Razzina. Hello everyone. Uh, thank you, uh, Professor Piscalia, for your great talk uh, about the importance of uh, clinical background before we uh, proceed with uh, examination because it is uh, sometimes stressful and sometimes uh, changing in the course of examination within few minutes. Uh, I uh, want to see if there are any questions from the audience. Uh, so far I have not received any questions, uh, but I do have uh, one question for you. On the uh, typical setting, uh, we know that there are milliliters or typical algorithms or the pathways how we should perform. Still, all the guidelines do not always say everything very exactly. What is the reason behind that? If you mean the amount of contrast, uh, the reason is that uh, the equipments are uh, very rapidly evolving and the sensitivity sure. might be different. Now, can you hear me? Uh, yes, this is Jean-Michel, I guess. Yes. Okay, I just finished my answer and I give the okay. word to you, Jean-Michel. No, no, no problem, thank you. Okay, so this is mainly related to the sensitivity of the equipments and uh, to, the, uh, to the probe. Clearly, if we use linear probes, we need much more contrast because the resonant frequency is not that of the microbubbles. And also, the size of the patient might uh, impact and also the location of the lesion that we want to explore. Uh, deeper lesion do not mean we need more contrast because this means that we have also more contrast in front of the lesion which might cause acoustic shadowing. So clearly I think there is a, a need of a lot of experience to decide which is the best setting with the best amount of contrast. Okay, thank you Fabio. Uh, so far from the audience I do not see the questions at this moment but we will have a few minutes at the end of all the webinar if uh, some questions will arise from um, our listeners.